So I'm walking through the store the other day, and we're walking down the cereal aisle, and this box of cereal caught my kids' eyes, of course, because uh, they're drawn to the fact that they can get these cool-looking lightsaber spoons if we buy three boxes of Kellogg's Corn Flakes and then cut off the box top and send it in. And of course, this is nothing more than a sales gimmick, a way that Kellogg's can try to increase their sales by fooling little kids or even some adults into buying their cereal not to actually eat the cereal but to get this crazy spoon. So, you know, we see these gimmicks all over the place and nobody stops to ask the question, how would we account for this transaction? Um, if we have an obligation to people that buy our product that we are going to sell them or se not sell them but send them this free gift if they send in the receipt or the box top because it is an obligation the organization uh, has that they have to fulfill if they promote this um, offering. So the accounting rules are very specific and they say look this is a loss contingency. There's a potential loss contingent upon the fact that the customer goes and sends in the coupons or the uh, proof of purchase to to receive this promotional item in return. So we've got to uh, correctly account for it. So I've made up this problem. Hopefully you've looked through it and had a chance to work work it out and come to an answer. Um, but the basic premise is: Is it probable? Is it reasonably es es Is it is it probable? Is it reasonably possible? Or is it remote that this is going to happen? And it's it's probable people will actually like my kids want to send this in and get the spoon in return. And so. If it's probable and we can reasonably estimate how much we have to pay in uh, exchange for the promotion, we have to account for it and accrue it. It's a loss contingency. So we have to book a, an expense for this promotion in the period in which we sell the cornflakes. So this matching principle comes up. And so we sold the cornflakes in uh, year one. Uh, we're told here we sell 300,000 boxes of cereal in year one and the promotion ends in year two so we've got a timing issue here in that the c customer can send the box tops back up in, in two different years and, and we have to send the spoon out to them and we need, we need to get the cost of the spoons in the year we sold the product which is year one so we're going to try to estimate how much that cost is going to be uh, and put it into the income statement for year one so let's uh, walk through what's going to happen for Kellogg company in year one. So the first thing I'm going to uh, record here is, um, let me just put these headings in here, is we'll, we'll record, you know, when, when the, the promotional department says we're going to come up with this gimmick, they actually go out and they buy the spoons. So they buy the spoons and they put them in a warehouse somewhere in a container and then they ship them out of there. So they buy how many spoons they think they're actually going to sell, and based on prior experience, they think that about 60% um, of the people that buy the box tops will actually re buy the cereal will actually redeem the the um, box tops for the spoon. So they buy 60,000 spoons, and the way we got 60,000 spoons is if we sold 300,000 box tops, not 30,000, but 300,000. Uh, it's going to take, what, three box tops to get one spoon. That would mean there's 100,000 spoons potential we would be on the hook for. But past experience says we're going to uh, expect 60% of the customers to send it in. So 60% of the potential spoons we could end up shipping out is 60,000. That's why they bought 60,000 spoons. So let's record that entry. And so, I don't know, December... We don't know when they bought spoons. We'll just say December 1 of year 1. They go ahead and they actually buy the spoons and they create an inventory account for premiums. Premiums is a generic uh, name. It could be spoons or whatever. So the amount they, they buy are the 60,000 spoons and we're told they pay $2 per spoon. So they spend 120 grand and they either pay for that with cash or accounts payable. So that's the entry to get the inventory into the records of the um, of the uh, cereal company. So we'll just say, we'll just label it here, purchase the spoons. 
So that's my first entry in year one. The second thing that happens is we actually sell some cereal, 300,000 boxes. So again, we don't know the exact date. They're sold presumably throughout the, the year, the year or in this case the month. Um, but we know we're going we're gonna to assume we get cash for selling those uh, boxes of cereal. And we sell 300,000 boxes. And we have an estimated average sell price of $1.75. So we're going to receive cash of $525,000, and we correspondingly book the sales revenue of $525,000. So we would say record the sale of 300,000 boxes of cereal. So right now my income statement, the, the revenue increased by 525 and this entry had no impact on my income statement at all and we say that's misleading because we have this gimmick this promotion this s and, and those sales apparently happened in part because of this gimmick this promotion not necessarily a gimmick um, so so we have to record the estimated expense it, um, with these sales of the actual spoons we expect to send out so the entry is going to actually occur again in December one, uh, uh, December of year one, and we're going to go ahead and I'm going to push this into my income statement and I'll just call it a premium expense. And uh, the amount is for the amount I estimated we are going to actually ship out this hundred twenty thousand dollars. We expected, the, and we went through the math already, we expect all 60,000 spoons to be redeemed, and they cost us $2. So we expense that entire 60,000 spoons in the year in which these sales occurred. Now, um, since we don't send all of the spoons out yet, this is where the entry becomes somewhat challenging. We create this premium liability. And what this is effectively doing, this is called an accrual dealing with accrual accounting. We booked the expense but haven't yet fulfilled our end of the obligation so we create this balance sheet account, this liability account, current liability for these uh, items we're going to be on the hook for. So again, my revenue went up, profit went up, but the expense related to that revenue in the form of the premium drove profit back down by a co the appropriate amount. So we would call this entry something like the S. S estimate of the total premium. But we had some of the box tops actually come in and be redeemed. So presumably we received 30,000 box tops and in exchange we sent out spoons. But we only sent out one spoon per three box tops. So you divide that by three, it's 10,000 spoons. And so in the same year, December of year one, we shipped the spoons out of this inventory. We created this inventory account. It's now going to decrease because we're shipping out 10,000 spoons. So we would expect the inventory for the premiums to get smaller by the 10,000 spoons times $2. And so here's the trick, and I hope you can appreciate and understand what's going on here. We don't book premium expense again. That would be double dipping. We've already accounted for the entire $120,000 of expense. Instead, we're in when we booked that expense, we created a corresponding liability. We are going to pull the actual redemption of the spoons out of the estimated premium liability. In, this, in effect, avoiding any impact on the income statement. This is a balance sheet account and this is a balance sheet account. So we correctly hit the income statement with these two transactions. Everything else is going to hit the balance sheet and bypass the income statement. So at the end of the year, the second part of the requirements say, what's this, you know, tell me what's happening to the balance sheet. Well really at the end of the year what I like to think is we have two accounts um, because of this premium that we should uh, account for and, and understand. There's one that's a liability, and I'm going to just create the T account here so we can see what's physically going on in this account. We'll say it's got, I know these aren't split evenly uh, down the middle, so I'm sorry, but this would be the debit 
and this would be the credit and what and we're just going to post the, the accounts and what happened up here and we're saying that uh, the in the premium increased here the credit so we had a, we had this liability we owe out in the future but we had some people send in the spoons some customers sent in the box tops and redeemed the spoons and so we owe twenty thousand dollars less so the net effect at the end of the year is I have this liability for $100,000 on my balance sheet. And you should understand this is a current liability. The reason it's a current liability is because the promotion ends in the next year. So if they forget, if they don't send it in by March 15th, that they're, they're done. They, they don't get the opportunity to get the spoons. So we expect all $100,000 to be redeemed in the following accounting period. The other account on the balance sheet is the premium inventory. And uh, you know, I can just put the lines in here real quick, so uh, we can post to the account what actually happened throughout the year, and we'll know that. And again, this is the debit, this is the credit. And we bought the inventory up here. We bought $120,000 of inventory, and we actually shipped out $20,000. So we still have sitting in a bucket or a box somewhere in our warehouse. $20,000 of a current asset, and that's the premium inventory.